Hi everyone, I am Dr. Himadri. Actually, I want to discuss today about a topic which during my MBBS days, I found it very difficult to remember during, especially during the exam times, the difference between the caput succidinum, subgallial hemorrhage and cephal hematoma. I think many of you may be having problem uh, remembering these things as well. So let's fix it for life. Let's talk about the layers of scalp. Okay. Remembering this is very easy because the mnemonic is scalp as well. From superficial to deep, there is scalp. That is skin followed by connective tissue, subcutaneous connective tissue beneath the skin. Okay. There is connective tissue and after connective tissue we have aponeurosis. It is called as gallial aponeurosis or epicranial aponeurosis. And deeper to the aponeurosis, we have loose areolar tissue. And deeper to it, we have periosteum of the skull bone. So once again, this is scalp, skin followed by connective tissue, aponeurosis, loose areolar tissue, then periosteum. And here I am pointing towards the emissary vein, the vein that connects or drains the skin and the connective tissue into the dural venous sinuses. Okay. And this yellow, uh, which I am drawing right now, is basically the skull bone. It is the skull bone. So once you know the layers, it becomes very easy to understand these three things. Okay. Once again, this is your skull bone and above the skull bone, we have periosteum. If there is collection of blood in between the periosteum, the blue uh, where we, I am representing uh, the periosteum as blue. If, uh, if there is collection of blood in between the, if there is collection of blood in between the periosteum and the skull bone, we call it cephal hematoma. Okay. Above the periosteum, we have loose areolar tissue and above it, we have epicranial aponeurosis or gallial aponeurosis. If there is collection of blood between the gallial aponeurosis and the loose areolar tissue that is in the subgallial space, we call it subgallial hemorrhage. And above it, we have subcutaneous tissue. Now look here, the brown here basically represents the skin as well as the hair. Let's say you have arterioles divided into capillaries followed by venules and vein. Let's say there is pressure effect. There is obstructed labor. This is the head of the baby. And if there is encircling pressure effect like this, it is going to block the venous drainage. As the venous drainage is blocked like this, there will be what? There will be collection of fluid in the subcutaneous tissue. So we call it, what we call? We call it caput succidinum. This is called as caput succidinum. Okay. In the word succidinum, you can see there is edema. From the succidinum, you can see, we can write it, uh, we can remember it like this. It is only edema. It's not the blood. It's all about uh, the most superficial thing is not blood. This is the tissue fluid. Okay. It occurs due to prolonged labor. This is superficial. Please remember superficial things that it appears early. It goes as well as uh, it goes early as well. Okay. It appears early means just after birth, within few hours, I mean, just after birth, there will be uh, this collection and also it goes early as well, within two to three days. It's only the tissue edema. Okay. Now, let's talk about the subgallial hemorrhage. Subgallium means within the subgallial space that is in between the loose areolar tissue and the epicranial aponeurosis. So this is deeper in location. That means the pressure would be much more than what we had in the caput succidinum. Okay. 
Look, it occurs basically due to rupture of the emissary vein, the vein that connects the subcutaneous tissue with the dural venous sinuses. As it is deep, you can remember like that, it appears late as well and also it goes late. Late means after few hours of birth, you can have this subgallial hemorrhage and it, it also goes late means 2 to 3 weeks after birth. Okay, It occurs due to mainly due to ventuous uh, that is because of the suctioning effect of the ventuous that we use in assisted delivery. Okay, now much more deeper in, in anatomical location we have cephal hematoma. It occurs due to much more pressure effect remember this. Okay, this is more, much more deeper and it occurs due to forcep delivery. Remember one thing, more the amount of pressure delivered, deeper becomes the injury. Okay, it occurs due to forcep delivery, there is maximum pressure and more, remember this, if there is more deeper the injury is, it, uh, it appears late, it disappears late as well. Okay, it appears next day after 24 hours, it goes late, 2 weeks to 3 months time it takes for resolution. So once again caput succedinum that is edema it is not blood it is only fluid it is superficial occurs due to prolonged labor it go, comes early just after birth goes early as well 2 to 3 days and subgallial hemorrhage it is deeper it occurs due to rupture of emissary vein okay and also because of ventuous delivery uh, it appears late it goes late as well <coughs> and in cephal hematoma it's much more deeper in anatomical location. It occurs due to forcep delivery. It comes the next day, 24 hours after birth. It goes late as well. Two weeks to three months time it takes for resolution. Okay, that's it. What you can see here, this is the pitting edema. Pitting edema means there is collection within the subcutaneous space, in the subcutaneous tissue. So this is caput succedinum. In this video what you can see, it's like a pouch or a bag. Within the bag we have fluid or we have blood, actually collection of blood. This is what it is. This is called as subgallial hemorrhage. And also it crosses the midline. Only one thing that will not cross the suture line is your, the last one. That is your cephal hematoma. Because it is within the bone. How it will cross the suture line? So, now I think you will be you will be able to remember this. Thank you.